on House Bill 2598, altering the definition of an above ground storage tank. This hearing has been organized by public interest groups, including West Virginia Rivers Coalition, West Virginia Environmental Council, West Virginia Citizen Action Group, West Virginia Sierra Club, and the Ohio Valley Environmental Coalition. Why is it necessary to hold a people's public hearing on this important issue? Public hearings on bills of interest during the legislative session used to be guaranteed. It was a time honored tradition that allowed legislators to benefit from the, hearing the opinions and experiences of regular West Virginians. So long as a request was made within the established rules of the West Virginia House of Delegates, a public hearing was mandatory. However, 2021 rule changes in the House have made it difficult or even impossible to successfully request a public hearing. Multiple requests for public hearing on House Bill 2598 were denied by Chairman Anderson of the House Energy and Manufacturing Committee and Chairman Pack of the House Health and Human Resources Committee. In early February, more than 40 organizations sent a letter to Senate and House leaders requesting that every effort be made to assure public access during the 2021 legislative session, including reversing House rules that made public hearings unlikely. On the plus side, a virtual public hearing on House Bill 2389 authorizing the Department of Environmental Protection to promulgate a legislative rule relating to requirements governing water quality standards has been scheduled by House Judiciary Chair Capito. The hearing has been scheduled for 9 a.m. on Monday, March 1st. We anticipate that details on the Judiciary Committee website will be available soon. You can start by visiting the legislature's website at www.wvlegislature.gov, then navigate to House, then Committee, then Judiciary, and if necessary, to Committee Agendas under that tab. In short, the West Virginia Legislature could be doing more to guarantee public access during the legislative session, and we certainly encourage them to do so. Now for the people's public hearing process. To make this as realistic an experience as possible, you've been given short notice and asked to arrive early in the morning and your time will be limited. Like a public hearing in the West Virginia Legislature, this people's public hearing will feature speakers who are in favor or opposed to the legislation that's being discussed, in this case, House Bill 2598. Each speaker has pre-registered before last night's 8 p.m. deadline. Each speaker will have up to one and one half minutes to make their comments. At the end of that time, you will be given a cue and you will have a few seconds to wrap up your remarks. Uh, we will need to move on to the next speaker. Uh, so if we have to mute people and move to the next speaker, unfortunately, we will do that. Our time is limited. If you did not register to speak, you are free and encouraged to post comments or questions in the chat box or on Facebook. The organizers will also monitor the chat for questions from legislators and from the media for a question and answer session briefly toward the end of this hour. Following the meeting, the organizers will release information about the people's public hearing to the media. So now it's time to welcome our first speaker, Mr. Paul Brewer. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Great, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, I've been with the whitewater industry uh, since 1969. I've seen millions of people enjoy the clean waters of the New River and the Gully River. Uh, 
we need to keep this uh, rivers, the rivers clean, all the rivers, Canal River, every river clean for the people, um, health, but also tourism. Tourism means jobs in this state and tourism is now growing. Uh, we have a great opportunity to expand our tourism and we need to be vigilant uh, against these types of bills that are passing through. Uh, the legislature and, and uh, oppose any change. I mean, we're a leader right now in vaccination and in, in the health of our citizens of West Virginia. So why do we wanna change and, and go back to being listed as 49th in the, in the United States of clean water? That's just wrong. So we need clean jobs, we need clean water, and uh, it would help the tourism business. It would just help the economy and help the health of the citizens of West Virginia. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you so much, Mr. Brewer. We'd like to now move on to our second speaker, Mr. Gary Zuckett. Uh, thanks, Sam. Um, my name is Gary Zuckett, and uh, I am executive director of West Virginia Citizen Action Group. And uh, I would just like to say that the, the above ground storage tank act as it was passed was a good law. It's not broken and it doesn't need fixed. House Bill 2598 will break it. Taking away protections against fracking fluids getting into our tap water intakes is not a good idea. What are these fracking fluids? The Chemical and Engineering News of the American Chemical Society says this in an article entitled Figuring Out Fracking Wastewater. Quote, the fracking wastewater of organics, metals, and radioactive materials. Some of these substances get put into the water as fracking fluid additives. Some are formed during degradation or transformation reactions, and some come from the underground geologic formations. This is not just salty water, as many would like to suggest, and it's uh, the tanks in containers holding it should be monitored and tested according to the existing law when they are too close to public water intakes. This is not the brine you want to marinate your turkey in. So what's the real situation here? Why do we have this bill before us? This bill is taking us backwards. It seeks to ease the burden on the oil and gas industry an industry that has extracted millions and billions of dollars of wealth from West Virginia. What about the burden of nine counties not having water to drink or only approved use of the water coming out of your tap is to flush your toilet? That's Time. What Time already? Okay. Well, thank you. I'm just here to ask every lawmaker from every advantage and keep the protections already in code. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zuckett. Our next speaker will be Ms. Betty Rivard, followed by Mr. Dave McMahon. Uh, thank you, Sam. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Sam, and the sponsors of this hearing. I'm Betty Rivard. I'm an independent volunteer citizen advocate and I've been around the legislature for 30 years, this time totally from home. And uh, during the water spill in 2014, I was at the legislature working as staff and uh, in charge of the information desk by the second story rotunda. And I drank water all day without knowing what, I, you know, what was in it, uh, became ill, and then became ill again when I flushed the pipes uh, at the house where I was staying in Charleston. And I don't wish this experience on, any, on anyone. Um, I've seen us develop the laws. I've seen them eroded steadily. And I think from hearing the testimony in the, in the energy committee, this would be a major step backward. I agree that the law is working. From what I heard, it's preventing worse situations from happening and keeping the industry alert as to what needs to be done. And I oppose this law and I respectfully ask the legislators to oppose it also. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Dave McMahon followed by Mr. Hunter Starks. 
Hi, I'm Dave McMahon. I'm a lawyer. I'm a co-founder of the West Virginia Surface Owners Rights Organization. We have 800 people who have paid dues, but West Virginia has a population of 1.8 million, about 800,000 live in municipalities. So we like to say we surface owners speak for the other 1 million uh, who live in the country. Um, and there are 70,000 oil and gas wells on those citizens. Many of those wells have brine tanks. And then there's also a separate category of oil tanks. Um, yes, they have secondary containment. They're supposed to, which is a, a dike around a dike around the outside. Um, but those things leak. Um, if, if, if it's spill into secondary containment, if there's a crawdad hole or something, I, I've seen it leak out. Um, now, I've heard them say, well, oil tanks are going to be empty because they want to get the money. Well, maybe, but maybe have to wait for enough to make it worth the trip. Brine tanks, not so much. Once the driller gets the brine tank in a truck, it's got to pay to dispose of it. And as pointed out earlier, brine is a euphemism. Yes, in some areas it can be good on roads, but depending on formations, there are lots of hydrocarbons you would not want to mess with. Current law require, requires inspections of eight or 900 tanks under the Tank Act. But what stuns me is these are not wells that are five hours away. These are wells that are five minutes to five hours away. Um, but there is no requirement for the state to inspect the other 69,000 oil and gas wells. Let me say that again. That was, there was a mistake someone said at another hearing. There are 69,000 where there is no requirement for inspection. And this bill, if it passes, will add another 800. Right now, we have one oil and gas inspector for every 5,000 wells, one for every 5,000. Used to be one for every 3,500, but the budget's been cut. Um, the operator has to inspect once a year, but no one checks to see if the operator has been inspecting. Uh, so they want to eliminate inspections by any other agency other than oil and gas. Inspections aren't going to happen. Um, this is a bad bill, and the Office of Oil and Gas needs to restore it. Wait, it's gone from 40 to 25. Time. Uh, it, it, uh, employees with one inspector for every 5,000. Office of Oil and Gas budget needs to go back to where it was and above that in order to inspect all these wells on a regular basis. Thank you very much to the sponsors of this hearing. Thank you. Our next speaker is Hunter Starks, followed by David Lillard. I don't see Hunter Starks in our participant list. Thank you, David Lillard, followed by Angie Rosser. I thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is David Lillard. I live in Jefferson County, West Virginia. I urge the legislature to reject HB 2598. You know, any of us who own a car or a truck has to maintain the vehicle so that it's safe to operate so that we don't hurt somebody if it's not safe to operate. And we are required to pass an annual inspection. And certainly, if all of us, the people, can do our part to protect public safety, indeed the companies who store hazardous chemicals can do the same. They can properly maintain their facilities and undergo annual inspection. It's not too big a burden. This bill passed unanimously. The provision in the bill and, and the above ground storage tank act passed unanimously in 2014. Nothing has changed. I would urge the legislature to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Lillard. Next is Angie Rosser, followed by Eric Engel. Good morning, I'm Angie Rosser, the Executive Director of the West Virginia Rivers Coalition, and we stand in strong opposition to House Bill 2598. We have been involved with the Above Ground Storage Tank Act since 2014 and have seen it get chipped away to where it's a mere shell of what it originated as. And this is our last stand when it comes to these oil and gas tanks. We compromise, compromise, compromise to keep these zones of critical concern protected because they are, they are where it is most crucial to provide oversight to protect our public drinking water. So why is this bill so dangerous? One, because of what I just said, these tanks are sitting closest to our drinking water intakes. 
Number two, they contain, we know, a, a mixture of very toxic chemicals that are harmful to human health. And three, there's, there, there's just no fallback. If these tanks are exempt, there is essentially no oversight and leaves our drinking water at risk. We also know these tanks are the poorest performing tanks. In 2019, of all of the leaks of tanks in West Virginia, two out of three of them were these tanks. Two out of three were oil and gas tanks. So we urge the legislature to reject this bill, to stand up for West Virginians who want confidence in their drinking water supplies. We want peace of mind. We want to attract and retain our citizens. And we know that rolling back protections to drinking water will have the opposite effect. Please reject 2598. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Eric Engel, followed by Mari Johnson. Good morning. My name is Eric Engel. I reside in Parkersburg, House of Delegates District 10. One of my delegates, Delegate John Kelly, is lead sponsor on House Bill 2598. I'm here today to help stress why House Bill 2598 must never be allowed to become law. This legislation, to quote from the Charleston Gazette, would remove tanks containing 210 barrels or less of brine water or other fluids produced in connection with hydrocarbon production activities in zones of critical concern from regulation under the Above Ground Storage Tank Act. According to the seventh edition of the Compendium of Scientific, Medical, and Media Findings Demonstrating Risks and Harms of Fracking, a fully referenced 475-page compilation provided by the Concerned Health Professionals of New York and Physicians for Social Responsibility, the 2005 Energy Policy Act exempts hydraulic fracturing from key provisions of the Safe Drinking Water Act. As a result, fracking chemicals have been protected from public scrutiny as trade secrets. Companies are not compelled to fully disclose the identity of chemicals used in fracking fluid, their quantities, or their fate once injected underground. Of the more than 1,000 chemicals that are confirmed ingredients in fracking fluid, an estimated 100 are known as endocrine disruptors, acting as reproductive and developmental toxicants, and at least 48 are potentially carcinogenic. Adding to this mix are heavy metals, radioactive elements, brine and volatile organic compounds, which occur naturally in deep ge geological formations and which can be carried up from the fracking zone with the flowback fluid. A 2020 Hi. study identified, oh, okay, thank you. I, I'm gonna ask that you oppose HB 2598, protect our water in West Virginia, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Engel. Our next speaker is Mari Johnson, followed by Barry Wendell. I started talking with that thing unmuted. Uh, good morning. I am Mari Johnson from Monroe County, West Virginia, home of some of the purest water in the world. I oppose HB 25. 98. Tell you a little story. 2014, a few days after the water crisis hit Charleston, I went to Charleston to fly out uh, an early morning flight to California to my daughter's wedding. The plane was a little bit late leaving. I asked the stewardess that morning what was happening. She says, oh, we won't stay in Charleston. They had to fly their employees to Roanoke to stay in Roanoke. This is an economic issue. People are leaving the state. You travel anywhere, I've, lots of places I've traveled in Washington state and California with daughters in the Navy. And we're kind of known as the place that's destroying our water. Everybody, whether you're municipal water or well water or spring water deserves clean water. If this bill passes, the people who voted for it, the, the illnesses and possible deaths that occur from it will be on your shoulders. I oppose, strongly oppose 2598. Every West Virginian deserves clean water. Thank you so much for your comments. Our next, next speaker is Barry Wendell, followed by Regina Hendricks. Good morning. I'm Barry Wendell. I'm a um, city councilor in the city of Morgantown. I represent the seventh ward. Uh, we in West Virginia are concerned about the decline in population in our state, especially in cities like Charleston. One reason people don't want to come here is because of the freedom industries spill in 2014. No one will want to move here if we make it easier for our water to be polluted by fluids from extractive industries. Do you want people to move here 
or do you want another giveaway to the fossil fuel industry? You can't have both. Reject 2598. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments, Mr. Wendell. Our ne next speaker is Regina Hendricks, followed by Margaret Worth. Good morning. My name is Regina Hendricks. I was born in the Chemical Valley a long time ago. I'm living in Charlestown now because I left the Kanawha Valley because I was concerned about the water and the air. So I'm here to speak on behalf of the economy and the environment. I've watched the poisoning of the wells in the southern part of the state. I watched what happened in Charleston. I read every time, every year that we're losing population. Well, we have a bad reputation already. And I ask you to please reject House Bill 2598. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Margaret Worth, followed by Dwayne Nichols. There's no one in our participant list under the name Margaret Worth. Thank you. Margaret Worth doesn't appear in the list. Maybe she'll join us later. Next speaker will be Dwayne Nichols, followed by Eileen Kerfman. Dwayne Nichols does not appear in our participants list. Thank you. We'll keep going through to the next speaker. Eileen Kerfman, followed by Tracy Danzi. Thanks for giving us a chance to speak today. HB 2598 would put drinking water at risk in 27 counties. Now, I hear a lot of talk about the need to attract businesses to West Virginia. When businesses choose a location, they look at a lot of different factors, but one of the most important is quality of life. What business owner in their right mind would bring their employees and their families to live in a place where the drinking water was a cocktail that included radium and crude oil. That could happen under HB 2598. We hear about the high cost of West Virginians' poor health. I'm pretty healthy. My mom wouldn't let me drink soda. She cooked bean soup, chicken and dumplings. I'm afraid that those traditional dishes or that nice clean water would not have been as good for me if my mom had cooked with benzene broth or a sprinkle of xylene, or maybe a little radium in that cup of water I drank. What will that contaminated drinking water do to our children? What will be the cost over their lifetimes? Why on earth would we do this to our own kids? West Virginia is fortunate to have plenty of good water. Please keep it safe for human use. Please oppose HB 2598. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kerfman. Our next speaker will be Tracy Danzi, followed by Linda Frame. Um, Tracy Danzi is not present in our participant list. Thank you. Uh, Linda Frame, followed by Quentin King. Thank you, Sam, and good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Thank you. My name is Linda Frame, and I am president of the West Virginia Environmental Council. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with us, we are an umbrella organization of environmental groups across the state and have been so for 30 years. We decided along with the other sponsors for this hearing that this was important to do after being declined through the normal public hearing request process. Because we represent people from across this great state who deserve to have a voice in the decisions that impact their air and water. On Tuesday, the House Energy Committee heard from scientists who answered questions about the bill. They discussed the term brine, explaining that it's much more than salt water, as other speakers have already explained. An industry lobbyist was also questioned on Tuesday. 
He and a delegate remembered together how some small tank owners in his district had to choose, had to close due to regulations, costing some constituents their access to free gas. They remembered how they worked together to restore that access, and they talked about how this bill could put small tank owners out of business. This made me think of the choice West Virginians are often forced to make, choosing between the benefits of having industries in our state and living with the pollution that they create. Legislators, please ask yourself if you want your constituents to have to make this choice. Because voting yes on this bill, you will be making that choice for them. And don't your constituents deserve clean, safe drinking water? If HB 2598 comes before you for a vote, please, right. and at the very least, please table this bill until it is safe for your constituents to be in our Capitol building. Thank you so much for the opportunity today to speak out against this bill. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Quentin King, followed by Pamela Garrison. Thank you. Uh, so the, <clears throat> the disaster seven years ago was one of the two or three things that really motivated me to go and get my uh, master's degree in public health. Uh, I learned a lot from my environmental and history classes there. One of the most important things was that we need regulations on hazardous and polluting industries like this because there are no second chances when it comes to the population and public health. Harming the water can cause you know, lifelong harm to entire communities, especially the youth that we're supposed to protect. Um, at the committee hearing earlier this week, the oil and gas lobby has said we'll be able to trust tank owners to ensure their tanks are up to par and safe. I think we have decades of evidence in West Virginia, the United States, the entire world that prove otherwise. When disasters do happen, there's little punishment for them, whereas people like us have to drink and breathe those mistakes. Um, so this law should not pass, and you know we can't trust them to regulate themselves, and so we need things like this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. Our next speaker is Pamela Garrison, followed by Karen Ireland. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm uh, from Fayette County. I was originally from Raleigh County. I moved here in my younger days uh, because of um, it was such a nice place to raise a family, starting out a family. I found a nice little play house in Minden. It was a it was a nice community. People hung on their white picket fence, visited each other. We had two thriving school uh, churches, a nice school. My husband taught uh, basketball to the little guys. I had two little girls that were played in the dirt and played along the creek. The creek runs from one end all the way through to the river to New River. Um, after a few years there, we started getting the news that. Um, that uh, barrels of PCB that had been stored in mines had leaked and had leaked into our community, into our creek. The floods had uh, made it get into our soil and all, all whenever it flooded the banks all into our yards. Um, I ended up with a I ended up seeing animals running around the neighborhood without a bit of hair on them. I want to address the, the, the after effects because after the chemicals are there, it's too late then. Um, the ground, you can't get rid of it. I, we saw dogs run around the neighborhood with no hair. Every friend just about I had, the younger ones that was younger than me are dead now of some kind of cancer. Um, the whole community is devastated. Um, most of the houses has been abandoned, fell in, they've tore down. There's a few families left still trying to fight for justice. I ended up having to move. I was paying for a house I couldn't live in. I, I couldn't sell it because of the PCBs. Nobody wanted to live there. Time. And the devastation is just, I just want to say you can't, after it's there, it's too late. So I oppose this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garrison, for raising up the story of Menden and its residents. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Karen Ireland, followed by Jean Evansmore. Good morning. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone, for, for doing this. My name is Karen Ireland. I, am, uh, I work for the Sierra Club now, but I'm here as a private citizen to talk a little bit about why I oppose this bill. 
Um, last year, I worked as a lobbyist for the West Virginia Environmental Council. And on January 9th, perhaps as an anniversary present for the citizens of West Virginia, the legislature introduced this exact bill. And, you know, it was like perfect timing for us in terms of messaging because the brazenness of, of rolling back this piece of legislation on the anniversary of something that devastated our community, and I'm talking about the Freedom Leap, um, was just over the top. And we had hundreds of people call and email and come in. So what's changed? Well, the Capitol's on lockdown. Nobody has to, to look their constituents in the eye as we've seen with the refusal of the legislature to grant a public hearing on this. And I think they, they think they can do what they wanted to do uh, originally, which was to roll back this protection. But the problem is what they're saying is not true. It's not salt water. It's not just a little bit of brine, just a barrel of brine. Well, we know that that's you know, upwards of 8,500, 8,800 gallons of um, material that can include benzene, can include heavy metals, can include radioactive materials. And so I think Time. that we challenge their assumptions, um, stay strong, and I hope that the legislators will vote to oppose this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jean Evansmore, followed by Sarah Carballo. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jean Evansmore. I was born and raised here in West Virginia. In fact, Concho is where I was born. I am, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm just awestruck as to how people can plan to kill other people, which is exactly what they're doing. My relatives have lived here in West Virginia, many of them all their lives. I moved away and came back. I came back to what I thought West Virginia was. Why in God's name would you want to do something to continue killing people? It makes no sense to me. I've heard so many speakers prior to me who know all the details. I know a little bit about fracking. This does not make sense. I try hard to figure out how to make the sensical stuff there. It isn't there. It isn't there. You're just content to kill people on the pre pretense of needing money, needing the jobs. If you don't have people, the jobs won't do you any good. People have had to move and leave here. I'm trying my damnedest to not have to leave West Virginia again. Don't do this. Use a little bit of common sense or pretend if you don't have the common sense. Just fake it. Fake it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Morgan, I'm sorry, Sarah Carballo, followed by Morgan King. Good morning, I'm Sarah Carballo. I'm here today to speak on behalf of the Ohio Valley Environmental Coalition and our membership, but also as a concerned resident of Huntington, West Virginia, one of the many communities that relies on the Ohio River for our public drinking water utility. House Bill 2598 would roll back protections adopted in response to the 2014 Freedom Industry spill that contaminated the drinking water supply for nearly 300,000 people in the Kanawha Valley and the surrounding communities. In the aftermath of that disaster, it became evident we're not well prepared to respond to large scale water contamination events. Water safety and security should be our priority at all levels of government, not only related to natural disasters, but man-made ones as well. We don't know the extent of the health and environmental impacts of many chemicals contained in these storage tanks located in zones of critical concern. And that fact in and of itself should be cause for more concern and more proactive measures, not fewer. We stand in opposition to House Bill 2598 and respectfully urge the legislature to reject this amendment to the Above Ground Storage Tank Act. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Morgan King, followed by Mark Blumenstein. Good morning. 
I'm from Charleston, West Virginia, and was a senior at Capitol High School when the 2014 water crisis occurred. At the time, I was shocked such a crisis could happen in my hometown and saw the fairly swift response of the Above Ground Storage Act as security that a crisis of that scale would not harm my family or community again. It inspired me to pursue studies in civil and environmental engineering and now in public policy. I've learned though since that the threat of water inequities in our state is far more complex and unfortunately political than my naive 17 year old self believed. The alleged gain of this policy would be, and I quote, thousands upon thousands of dollars to companies att attempting to exempt their tanks from the act. In reality, the actual loss of this policy, if another spill occurs, is the risk of the health of thousands upon thousands of lives to and to costs of our local businesses if they have to shut down again, such as in 2014. I'm taught in public policy school the importance of analyzing policymaking through a critical lens to determine the best outcome. Yet, in HB 2598, it's clear. The costs far outweigh the claim to benefits. If we want industry to come and thrive in our state, we must make it a safe place to live for our people first. That's with protecting our fundamental and abundant resource, water. Therefore, I oppose this law and urge lawmakers to do so as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Mark Blumenstein, followed by Matt Adkins. Mark Ownstein is not in the participants list. Thank you. We'll move on to Matt Adkins, followed by Daniel Lutz. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. My name is Matthew Adkins. I live in Huntington, and I'm a Marshall University student, as well as the treasurer of Marshall University Sustainability Club. I post House Bill 2598, altering above ground storage tanks. I grew up in a small town called Branchland here in West Virginia. In 2014, our state faced a water crisis, which did not allow me or anyone in my school district to attend for several months. I was 16 at the time and we did not know that this event would be a defining moment in our lives or their states. This water crisis was a chemical spill MCHM, a chemical that is toxic and as little is known about. This chemical ended up causing irreparable damages to not only our state, but our economy and our environment. The United States Congress in 1976 passed a law called the Toxic Substance Control Act, which regulates the introduction of new chemicals. MCHM and tens of thousands of other chemicals were introduced before 1976, so minimal research and testing are available on them. With this minimal amount of testing and research, we will never know the long-term effects that this chemical spill will have on West Virginia. West Virginia is a beautiful and vast state. However, with the introduction of this bill, it shows we take it for granted. House Bill 2598, if made into law, would endanger every citizen the way that MCHM endangered myself and my family's lives. If passed, it would leave a window for businesses to take their business elsewhere. As well as young people myself, such as myself, see this bill as a smack to the face, redefining our relationship with West Virginia looking to either stay or more than likely leave. When voting on this bill, I urge our legislative to, to, to take into consideration their constituents' shoes and their family's shoes. Do they want to come home to tell their children they cannot bathe, tell their wife they cannot cook, or tell their husband they cannot shower? No one should ever have to worry if their water is safe or not. I urge our legislative to vote no on House, 25, House Bill 2598. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you so much. It's great to learn about the Sustainability Club at Marshall, my undergraduate alma mater. Our next speaker is Daniel Lutz, followed by Elise Gooding. Daniel is not in our participants list. Thank you. We'll move on. Elise Gooding, followed by Joseph Golden. Hey, can you hear me now? Thank you, yes. Okay, sorry, I just realized I was muted. Um, good morning, my name is Elise Gooding. I just graduated from Marshall University with a degree in dietetics and hopes of attending medical school. Because of this, I am looking at my options for the future in terms of where I want to attend medical school and build a life. Because West Virginia is my home, I want to consider it a strong contender for my future. However, bills like HB 2598 make me reconsider this. The excessive use of dangerous chemicals has made West Virginia a hub of cancer and thyroid issues with people being much more likely to suffer a myriad of illnesses just because they were born here. 
This makes me feel both unsafe and extremely frustrated. I want to live somewhere that cares about its people and not just the profit of companies. HB 2598 sends the message that citizens don't matter and whatever can be done to make things easier for companies that can ruin our health will be done. Bills like this are why so many are moving out of West Virginia as soon as they are old enough to. Because of this, I urge you to vote no on House Bill 2598. Thank you and I yield the rest of my time. Thank you so much. Our next speaker will be Joseph Golden, followed by John David. Good morning, everyone. I live in Beckley. Um, I'd like to just make a few comments. With the history of the uh, free ministry chemical leak in 2014, we, the citizens of West Virginia, cannot trust the rest of the owners of above ground storage tanks to maintain and monitor their tanks to prevent leakages. Furthermore, if the politicians in West Virginia want to encourage economic development in our state, especially in areas such as tourism, uh, we cannot uh, feel that tourists will come to West Virginia if they know there is a leak. Tourism, tourists will not make a differentiation between a leak into the Kanawha, the Tigard, the South Potomac, the Tug River, Mahangahela, or any other river or stream or creek in West Virginia. They will basically feel that it's a leakage into all the waters of West Virginia and will not wish to visit our state. People won't come to West Virginia if they feel the water is polluted and will be poisoning them. Politicians can take an ounce of prevention by maintaining the law as it is, or later pay a, a ton of cure to deal with the economic backlash from people not coming to West Virginia because our borders are poisoned. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is John David, followed by Maya Meyer Thomas. Good, good morning, I'm John David. I'm the founder and 40 year veteran of the Page Kincaid Public Service District. I think we need to remember that the river water, stream water and public water is all owned by the people of West Virginia. We're entitled to clean water and to maintain it. Basically, this is a uh, this bill is a license to kill, to kill people. I think that we all have to recognize that whatever is put into tanks is sometimes and often not known. Companies go bankrupt. We are they're taken over by other firms. We don't know what's going on. I have personally seen tanks that have bullet holes in them because they've been targets of. Uh, guns and shots and things of that nature. I'm also concerned about storage tanks in other states that feed the public water supply, such as in Virginia, where the New River flows and contaminants come in from storage tanks in that vicinity as, as well. Basically, West Virginia American Water, which takes New River water, uh, doesn't know what's coming in. They don't have EPA uh, regulations that are current to monitor it. They have told me that they're not in fact going to put up a or put in a storage tank because they're not obligated to. And so what you have here is uh, what is flowing in through the Bluestone Dam uh, on a you know hit and miss basis. Uh, you don't know what's what's uh, what's flowing into the water supply. I think that with bankruptcies, climate change, and everything else, we have to make sure that the storage tanks, all of them, even in adjoining states that feed our rivers, right. are maintained properly. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Maya Meyer Thomas, followed by Autumn Crow. And then we'll give the folks who um, were not available in the queue earlier a chance to. Let us know if they're here. So next is Maya Meyer Thomas, followed by Autumn Crow. First off, thank you very much for making this available um, for us, the EC and 
just shame on our officials for disallowing the citizens that voted them in to speak. Um, so my name is Maya. I um, work for a watershed group in West Virginia. I am here as an independent citizen, however, so I will not mention um, their name. And I grew up, I remember as a 13 year old, I believe um, at my father's real estate um, business conference, meeting some of our elected officials, um, Joe Manchin being one and saying to them, what are you gonna do about our environment? Because that is linked to real estate and the economy as well. And put a little bit of shock on his face, but what has been done since then? Um, because I feel very frustrated with the fact that I choose, chose to pursue at WU a um, wildlife study, studies and conservation ecology degree. Um, I took an environmental law class, getting very excited to go to places like the DP and see um, presentations by a lot of individuals that work for. And it seemed that the people that worked there were very split. And I was very excited because this is what I wanna do. And it seemed like, exhausted employees that generally cared about protecting the citizens' health environmentally, and then a group of them that clearly had other intentions um, for personal profit, which was extremely frustrating as somebody that wants to pursue this as a career. I also have read endless amounts of articles and everyone has he heard recently about everyone leaving our state, myself included. I left quite a while as well. I love my state. I do not want to leave it. I want to work here. But when you do not put environmental justice is social justice because which is economic justice. It will bring us long-term jobs. It's frustrating to see my workforce not get paid and respected for the work we do. Um, so and and killing our um, our constituents and the citizens that vote you in. So please understand the disrespect you have if you vote this through. Please do not vote this through. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Our next speaker is Autumn Crow. Hi, I'm Autumn Crow. I'm the staff scientist for West Virginia Rivers Coalition. And I am adamantly opposed to H Bill 2598. This bill would endanger drinking water supplies of 27 counties and if a, a state that only has 55 counties, that's endangering the drinking water supply for half of our state. These tanks contain harmful chemicals that are extremely dangerous to public health. HB 2598 would eliminate regulations for approximately a thousand tanks that under this regulation, under the um, Above Ground Storage Tank Act, has been cited by DEP um, almost 2000 times. So those violations would have gone undetected had the Above Ground Storage Tank Act but not been in place. Exempting these tanks from the Above Ground Storage Tank Act would basically eliminate the protections um, for the drinking water. When these tanks fail, we've seen what happens. We've all talked about today the, um, the chemical spill that happened in Charleston. And that's why the Above Ground Storage Tank Act was in place in the first place and should remain in place to protect drinking water and to protect public health. It's a lot more costly to remove the contaminants once they enter the environment, once they're in the soil and once they're in the water, once they're in their groundwater, it's a lot more expensive for companies to remove the, the contaminants than it is for them to do an annual inspection. So I urge our legislators to reject HB 2598 and protect the citizens of West Virginia and their drinking water. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Delegate Mike Pushkin uh, waiting in the queue who wanted to, to address the group as well. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for uh, allowing me to uh, speak for a few minutes, Sam. And I apologize that I, I got on late and I apologize I have to go to the judiciary. I have to be in judiciary at nine o'clock. I just wanted to thank everybody for being on and thank the organizers of this call and um, apologize that 
that this is the way we have to do public hearings right now and, and that um, you know a, a piece of legislation that has the uh, you know that has the uh, capacity to to negatively affect so many people in, in West Virginia to impact so many uh, um, the health of, of our citizens and our constituents was twice denied a public hearing. To me, that is just is completely ridiculous. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what people think they're doing up here, or who they're who they who they think they they represent. Obviously, it's not the people. Um, it, it's largely uh, you know big out of state gas companies. Um, I try to see both sides of every issue, but we're talking about um, tanks that are within the zone of critical concern. Uh, to me, it, it's just it's ridiculous to roll this part of the above ground storage tank act back. Um, to me, it's, it's not too much to ask to have inspections and retaining walls when you're close to public drinking water intakes. Uh, so I'm, I serve on the committee that uh, it's going to be taking this bill up. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when I, I was told next week it'd probably be either Tuesday or Thursday. I would just uh, ask for your help in contacting uh, members of the, of the committee on health and human resources in the house. Um, I serve as the, um, a minority chair, uh, so the ranking Democratic member on the committee. I know it, uh, that our folks on the committee, I've not heard from anybody that's in support of this idea from our side. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we only have six votes out of 25 on the committee. So I'm gonna strongly urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle uh, to vote against this, that uh, safe drinking water is not a Republican or a Democratic issue. It's a human issue. Everybody needs it to live. We want to bring people to West Virginia. If we want to make West Virginia a great place to uh, live, work, and raise a family, like we so often hear uh, politicians say, um, we got to provide people with basic necessities like safe drinking water. And I, I live here in Charleston. I, I know what happens when we don't have it. I saw what the events were that led to the passing of the Above Ground Storage Tank Act, a bill that went through three major committees in the House of Delegates or it passed, it was properly vetted at the time. This bill has been rushed through, public hearings have been denied. Um, but I can say that after that chemical spill in 2014, that was the largest max, mass exodus I've seen from Charleston, West Virginia and from other parts of this state. We wanna bring people to live here. Uh, this is the least we could do. So I'm, I'm gonna do my best to try to vote this down, uh, but I need your help in calling my colleagues. But thanks for doing this, I appreciate y'all for being here. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. I know you have to rush. Let us um, maybe ask if there are other legislators on the call who uh, want to address the group. I know that everybody's probably got meetings coming right up. Delegate Larry Rowe. We surprised them with this, so they may not be at their desks. I think uh, Delegate Walker may have been on the call earlier too. Uh, you can feel free to raise your hand if um, you come in there. Oh, there he is, Delegate Rowe. Hi, good morning. I, I just want to say that uh, this is, uh, we have to call the the water rule bill we're going to consider uh, the, the, the uh, dirty water bill, but this, this bill is the deadly water bill. It's just amazing. It's amazing that it's been pushed through so quickly. Uh, I really appreciate the speaker sending it off to health. I think as Mike pointed out, maybe they can, can do some, some good on it, but uh, it's a terrible bill. It, you just can't explain why uh, 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 the legislature would want to, to, to create danger zones right at intake. Uh, uh, areas in our streams. I, it just, uh, it amazes me. So anyway, I appreciate having the hearing. I appreciate everybody who's participated. It really does matter. And thank you for doing it. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. It's been my honor. Um, if we find other delegates, feel free to uh, loop them in here. We want to go back. Uh, we I believe say, that, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, this is Evan Hansen. Oh, thank you. Delegate Hansen, go ahead. I just wanted to also thank everybody for uh, voicing your opinions. We, we had testimony in the energy committee from actual scientists and that testimony was pretty powerful, but unfortunately it didn't change any minds. So, you know, we need to hear not just from scientists, but from people who are protect, 
potentially affected. So I think Delegate Pushkin's advice was the right advice, contact members of the health committee and see, see if we could stop this bill at, at any stage along the way. Thanks. Thank you. Other legislators on the call, I'm trying to scan the participants. Uh, if not, we want to circle back to speakers who were not available in the queue. Uh, we believe that perhaps Mark Blumenstein is on the call. If you still wish a moment to speak. So, thank you. Um, we're getting some great comments in the chat. Those will be shared with the media in the release later this afternoon. I want to remind folks that this is, has been an open process. People who were either uh, in favor or opposed to this piece of legislation were welcome on the call as they would have been at a real legislative public hearing. And we appreciate the opportunity for um, uh, given to us by the planners to do this. We also want to open the call to questions from the media, if they may be on the call. And again, we will summarize the comments in the chat and uh, release something to the media later today. Uh, let me call uh, finally on Angie Rosser to let people know about contacting the proper committee members, how to find those. There was a question in the chat about um, somebody said, uh, Delegate Pushkin said, members of the committee were not hearing from their constituents. How do they make that happen? Thanks, Sam. Um Kathleen, maybe I'm not able to post in the chat to everyone, but we have a um, an action alert landing page set up that where you can enter your name and address and it automatically will help you send a message to your elected delegate. So we encourage you to um, take that action. Uh, maybe Hannah, I don't know if you can post a link to where people can find on the legislative website the members of the House Health and Human Resources Committee. Um, that list, you can click on their name and find their email and phone number. Phone calls, as you heard from Delegate Pushkin, are really important that they hear not just uh, email. They get a lot of email, but they hear, they get calls directly. We know this makes a difference. Um, and just want to remind you that uh, we have a water bill on the, another water bill that the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, uh, Chairman Capito, has decided to hold a, to host a virtual public hearing Monday morning at 9 a.m. We are still awaiting details on how the public can access that and speak of that. As soon as we get that, we will be sure to share that out with you as part of our, our follow-up from today's hearing. So thanks again for everyone coming out today. Um, this is, what we hoped for and expected and, and um, you know, reinforced to our legislators that the public is watching, that we're concerned about our water and we urge them to do the right thing uh, for the interest of all West Virginians, not just a few tank owners. Um, so thanks again, Sam and all the groups who helped post this today and we'll hopefully see you all again Monday morning. Let's make, let's just like, have regular coffees together, public hearings, I guess. <laughs> Thank you all for, for standing up for our water. Thank you. And for those of you who might be on the uh, mobile device, if you need to contact the legislature, uh, we really do have a very excellent website. You can do that through www.wvlegislature.gov, G-O-V. And you can navigate to find members of the House or Senate and the committees and uh, phone numbers and email addresses and all of those things. So I wanna thank you all for being part of this first People's Public Hearing. I want to thank the organizers and wish you all a wonderful day and much luck in this legislative session. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.